Did you know that your skin tags are directly caused by the food choices you make? There are certain foods you might be eating that could be the cause of your skin tags. A lot of my clients find that when they stop eating these foods or at least reduce them, that skin tags they've had for years will begin to shrink and even go away entirely. So if you want to find out what five seemingly healthy foods in your diet could be contributing to your skin tags, keep watching. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a certified health and nutrition coach. I post videos here on YouTube twice a week talking all things insulin resistance, weight loss, sleep, and more. So if you're ready to take control of your metabolic health, make sure to click that subscribe button. And you can also find me on TikTok and Instagram where I share new posts every single day. Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. For everything from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform that does it all. Head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate to start your free trial today. Skin tags are an interesting topic. A lot of people think that because they are found in skin folds, they are caused by friction. Around the neck, in the armpits, groin, and under breasts. However, despite the fact that they are often found in skin folds, they are not caused by rubbing. There are a lot of instances of skin tags where the area under question isn't under any friction. For example, a lot of people get skin tags on their eyelids. The cause of skin tags is actually rooted in our diet and the foods we eat. And when we make the correct changes to our diet and lifestyle, a lot of people find that their skin tags shrink and often go away entirely without the need for any topical removal. And we're gonna get into why exactly the foods we're gonna talk about today lead to skin tags as we go through the video. And make sure to stick around until the end because number five is something that is in most people's pantries that most people use pretty often and have no idea that it could be contributing to skin tags. So let's get into the list. Number one, dried fruit. We're gonna start off with a food that a lot of people think is a healthy snack, but it's really anything but. Dried fruit is fruit that has had the moisture removed and ends up being a concentrated source of sugar with next to no nutrients. But how does this tie in with skin tags? Skin tags are highly correlated with blood sugar issues. People who have frequent spikes in their blood sugar are more likely to have skin tags. And this is why diabetics often have skin tags and often have multiple of them. It all comes back to frequent spikes in blood sugar because when our blood sugar is spiking frequently, a lot of insulin is needed. And when insulin is constantly being pumped out, insulin levels remain high. And this high insulin is actually the cause of skin tags. Insulin is a growth hormone. When insulin is high, things in our body grow. And one of those things is skin tags. So anything we can do to reduce our spikes in blood sugar and lower our insulin is going to help our skin tags go away and prevent new ones from occurring. But wait, I'm sure a lot of you are thinking, but my fasting blood sugar is totally fine and I have skin tags. How can they be connected? Even if your blood sugar is fine for now, you could still be experiencing frequent blood sugar spikes throughout the day. A 2018 study found that 80% of healthy people, so people without prediabetes and without type 2 diabetes, experience blood sugar spikes into the pre-diabetic range. And with blood sugar spiking this high, this frequently, insulin is going to be high as well. But the thing is, fasting insulin isn't routinely tested. So a lot of people don't realize that despite having what is considered to be normal fasting blood sugar, their fasting insulin could still be high. Now back to dried fruit. A lot of people think that because the sugar in fruit is natural, that it's healthy, but the truth is the body can't tell the difference. Yes, there are different types of sugar, but your body handles them the same way, no matter if they come from fruit or from candy. And especially if you're eating dried fruit on its own, this is gonna cause a big spike in blood sugar, a big spike in insulin, and it's gonna contribute to your skin tags. Number two, oatmeal. 
This is another food that a lot of people think is healthy. They think they're making a good choice when they choose oatmeal for breakfast, but unfortunately it can cause skin tags. And this one is particularly problematic because a lot of people eat it in the morning on an empty stomach. Now, if you're confused because you thought oatmeal was low in sugar, yes it is, but let me explain. A cup of oatmeal does only have one gram of sugar, but it also contains 27 grams of carbohydrates. And when we consume carbohydrates, they are broken down into sugar. And this sugar, or glucose as it's also known, enters the bloodstream and causes our blood sugar to rise. When this happens, our pancreas releases insulin, which takes the excess sugar from our bloodstream and brings it to our cells, bringing our blood sugar back down to within a healthy range. The point is a lot of insulin is needed to process foods that are high in carbohydrates. And this is magnified when we eat these foods on an empty stomach. Now there are ways to eat oatmeal that are slightly better if you pair them with protein and fat, for example. So adding some Greek yogurt or eating it with some eggs. The protein and fat will help to slow down digestion, lowering the blood sugar spike and lowering the need for insulin. But ideally, you should try to start your day with a meal that's lower in carbs and higher in protein and fat on its own. Eggs, bacon, avocado, Greek yogurt. These are all foods that are high in protein and fat that are great breakfast options. When you start your day with these foods, it's going to help your blood sugar stay more stable for the whole day. It's going to help to keep your need for insulin low and it's going to help your skin tags reduce. Now, before we get into the final three foods that could be contributing to your skin tags, I'm gonna take a quick moment to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. I've been using Squarespace for about four years now for all of my business needs. I host my website and my domain on Squarespace, my email list. I have run an online store in the past and used their scheduling tool for booking one-on-one -on -one clients. All of this on one platform. I love having everything in one place and having it integrated seamlessly. So if you're looking to build a website for your business, for a side hustle, for personal use, Squarespace has got you covered. It's super easy to use and to customize. Their templates are award-winning and look so professional. If you wanna start a free trial, you can head to squarespace.com forward slash healthcoachkate and when you create your website and love it and you're ready to launch, make sure to use code HEALTHCOACHKATE to save 10% off your first order. Thank you again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Number three, juice. Next up, we have fruit juice. And it doesn't matter if it's store-bought or homemade, both options could be contributing to your skin tags. We already talked about why dry fruit isn't ideal, and the same applies to juice as well. Except juice is worse. At least with dried fruit, you still have some fiber, which helps to slow down the spike a little bit. With juice, you don't have that. So the blood sugar and insulin spike is even more significant. Combine that with the fact that one cup of orange juice contains roughly three oranges and 25 grams of sugar, and it really is a blood sugar and insulin and skin tag nightmare. If you want to include fruit in your diet, I always recommend eating it as whole fruit. And when you can opt for lower sugar options, so things such as strawberries, blueberries, avocado, making these choices will help your skin tags to reduce. Number four, whole wheat bread. Now this is an interesting one. People have this misconception that whole wheat bread is better for you than white bread. And yes, it does have marginally more nutrients and it is marginally better for blood sugar, but honestly, not by a lot. You're better off skipping the bread entirely or at least reducing it. Modern Western diets revolve around bread and grain products. Cereal, sandwiches, pizza, we eat these grain-based foods all the time. And where you can, reducing it will be beneficial. Or at the very least, make sure to pair whole wheat bread 
with fat and protein. As we said before, this is going to slow down digestion and lower the blood sugar and insulin spike less insulin and you're going to have less skin tags and the ones you do have are going to begin to reduce number five canola oil this is the final food if you can call it that on our list canola oil has been sold to us as this heart healthy alternative for cooking but really it's anything but while the exact mechanism is unclear, vegetable oils, including canola oil, have been shown to contribute to inflammation and insulin resistance, which leads to skin tags. Because of the type of fat they contain, oils like canola are really fragile. When they are exposed to any heat, light, or oxygen, they go rancid. And when you consume rancid oils, they cause extreme inflammation in the body. Now, manufacturers know that they go rancid. They go rancid during the processing because they require high heat to extract from the plant. And that is why they taste like nothing, they smell like nothing, because they have been entirely stripped of their flavor and odor to hide the fact that they are rancid. <laughs> Healthier options for cooking include coconut oil, tallow, and ghee. Olive oil and avocado oil are also okay for lower temperatures. They are still kind of fragile. They, they fall in between canola oil and coconut oil. Oils that are solid at room temperature are the most heat stable. They are the least likely to oxidize and go rancid. Canola oil, soybean oil, rice bran oil, all those that fall under vegetable oil, they're the most fragile. Avocado oil and olive oil, they fall in the middle. So they're good options, but use them at room temperature or just use them for low temperature cooking. I have a whole video on why canola oil and vegetable oils are bad for our health and bad for skin tags and other diseases. So I'm gonna link that above if you want to know more. But as is the topic of today, they can also contribute to insulin resistance and skin tags. Anyways guys, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section down below if you still include any of these foods in your diet and if that's gonna change after you've watched this video today. Let me know down below. I love chatting with you guys in the comment section and hearing where you're at, hearing the improvements that you've already seen in your health and your insulin levels. Also, let me know if you have had your skin tags reduce or disappear entirely because I know a lot of you have experienced this. And before you go, remember to check out Squarespace. The link will be in the description box down below. If you did enjoy this video, you might also enjoy my video on vegetable oils, which I talked about earlier. You can check it out here. If you want to catch up on my most recent upload, you can find it here. And if you want to check out my coaching programs, including my seven day insulin resistance masterclass and meal plan, you can find that here. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.